I've been through a lot, I just wanna do me. If that's not cool, I'ma take my leave. Like I, when I started making music, I thought the only way I could make it is if I had a record label. In this episode, Coda the Friend talks in depth about his creative process, being an independent artist, and breaks down his most meaningful song from Memo. The only way you can be an independent artist is if you really love what you do, because it takes passion to be independent. Let's go, Rush! All right, so I'm getting the gear ready to go shoot Coda the Friend. He's an artist that I play a lot here in the office. So not only is it a big opportunity for my channel, but it's nice to be interviewing someone that I admire as well. Let's go. So today I'm keen to break down your art and I want to know what is Coda the Friend's creative process when it comes to writing a song? It all starts with the music, I think, like pretty much 95% of the time. Either it's a sample or I have a sound in my head or I have a melody. Usually I have like just the bones of an instrumental, like a kick drum, a snare, some kind of melody in the background, you know? And I always, I just write to that. Before I add anything special to the song, I, I, I just write all of the lyrics. I write the, I start with the first verse, then I go hook, usually. And sometimes I start with the hook first. You know, I'll make the hook, I'll be trying to write the verse, but I end up writing a hook. So after I finish writing all of the vocals, then I create the beat around you know whatever um, the lyrics are and then I spend like a week really just you know getting into you know how I want it to sound and the, the very fine details so, yeah because you produce your own beats right mm -hmm. you do all the beats of the whole album not all the time you know but some sometimes I do that uh, and sometimes I work with producers but most of the time I produce my own stuff just because I have a particular sound that I'm, I'm looking for and I want it to be really custom, you know, custom made and not just like something that somebody made, you know. And I'm curious to know, how would you describe Coda the Friend as an artist? I'm just somebody that loves music and that loves to make music. It's enjoyable for me and um, I want to keep it that way. So I'm just, I'm just about the music. Adrenaline, still going. And let's break down your like standard week. How often would you record music? I try to work on music every day. Uh, life doesn't always permit that, you know? But yeah, if it, if it was up to me, I'd do it like every single day. And honestly, in 2023, it's one of my goals to work on music every day. Like have a schedule where from this time to this time, it's just dedicated 100% to writing and recording music. Uh, pull up in the Tesla, uh, your girl's calling me, I'm a texter. <laughs> and what's the one idea that you've had that changed the game for you? The one, the one idea that changed the game for me was the content that I was creating is now known as Lyrics To Go. I call it Lyrics To Go, so I have now volume one, two, three, and I'm coming out with volume four in January. But Lyrics To Go, it was a video concept. Before short form videos were a thing, and um, before TikTok and things like that, I was making these one minute videos where I would just, I would write like a, a 16 bar verse over a popular beat or a YouTube beat or whatever. And I would make this video where I would just stand completely still and I would put the yellow subtitles at the bottom of the videos. That idea really took me from like, Nobody listening to my music to actually gaining fans on a weekly basis. So that idea changed the game for me, you know, changed my life. Oh, that's dope, man. Head of the game. Well, speaking of that, I mean, how important is it to be original and a trendsetter? Because, I mean, that's essentially what you do. Well, at this point, there's so many creators and so many people releasing music that if you're not special, if you don't have something that separates you from the thousands of other artists that are dropping music every day, then it's just gonna get lost in the sea of everything happening. So being creative and being original is the most important thing, you know? So you've got a, a bunch of tracks where you talk about being in various locations. You've got Berlin, Colorado, Hollywood. Do you write these lyrics based on real experiences that you've had? 
Yeah, I do. Sometimes I write to manifest, you know? Like, I've always wanted to go to Colorado, so I made a song called Colorado, and then I went, you know? Uh, and But when it comes to Berlin, I actually went to Berlin first, and then I wrote the song, you know? So it's like, really just depends. Um, I, I've written about South Africa before I even went, and then two months later, I was in South Africa. So sometimes I just, I write about different places, because I want to visualize it and just like put myself there and it, it works out so yeah so when can we expect the, the track called melbourne melbourne i don't know i don't know that's actually a good idea i, I wouldn't put it past me <laughs> to do something like that now is it true that you edit and film all your own videos yes i'm curious to know about that because you know coming from a, a film background myself did you learn purely through youtube or did you go to school and, and learn about film youtube like I learned everything from YouTube. I, didn't, I, I only went to school for music and I was like junior high school, high school, and I did a semester of college for music. After that, it was YouTube University. YouTube taught me how to mix music. It taught me how to record myself and use um, Logic and Pro Tools and pretty much everything, Final Cut, everything. So it's just like, um, it was all, just YouTube and experience. And are you open to working with film directors or do you prefer to keep it all in-house and you'd rather do it yourself? I'm open to it. I'm definitely open to working with directors. I just haven't gotten around to it. And you know what, it takes so much time and energy and like to, to sit with somebody and explain your vision. And that's something I have to be better with is like, you know, making that time to actually make stuff like that happen. And so who are your biggest influences in, in general, like not just limited to music and, and art in general? When it comes to art, my biggest influence is just life, you know? Like, so a lot of times I'm not even consuming, um, consuming things, it's just like, I'm just living life and things are happening, good and bad, and it's just like, that, it, that inspires me. Oh, books. I love, like, I think authors have inspired me for sure and influenced me, like, um, Bell Hooks, she's influenced me a lot just through her writing. It's like, I really have, like, light bulb moments when I read certain things. Uh, there was this book called The Body Keeps the Score. Instantly changed my life after, like, the first week of reading it. I just couldn't put it down. And so I think for the, for the past few years, authors have really been it, you know? What about hip hop influences? Hip hop, Jay Z was no, is number one, you know. But it's not just Jay Z, um, Biggie, um, even Kanye. Like Kanye was the first artist that I I liked by myself. Like you know what I mean? I heard him in a shoe store when I was like when me and my mom were school shopping and for for the beginning of school. And I just ne I'll never forget that moment, you know, of listening to All Falls Down in a in a shoe store and thinking, yo, this dude is like the best, you know, and needing his music. And um, Jay-Z and Biggie, because they taught me how to rap. They gave me the skills that I have now because I was able to listen to them and take from them and, you know, try to mimic their flows and stuff like that. So um, as far as like hip hop influences, this is them. Now look, I love the fact that you're independent and you keep it all in house. I'm, I'm curious to know how big is your team? My team is very small, you know. Um, it's just me, uh, management, that's really it. You know, my, my touring team is me, my DJ, and who, who's this other guy? <laughs> nah, it's, it's me, it's me, my DJ, and my touring manager, and, and so we keep it just like that, you know? Those are the closest people to me, and, you know, we move, we move lean, you know? Your latest album, Memo, what's the one song off that that means the most to you? I think Empty Cup is my favorite song from Memo. I think it sums up the whole album. The concept that I was going for of just like uh, loving yourself, like that song is really like the focal point. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm pretty good. I'm crazy. Would you be would you be comfortable with recording like uh, two or three lines just like into the mic from yeah. Empty Cup? Because then we can piece it all together. Yeah. It'd be really sick. That'd be hard. Those were crazy. Oh yeah, you want me to do empty cut, right? <laughs> I'm gonna be freestyling this shit. Um, it's like a sing song. It's like, all right. It's hard to do it without a beat. 
Love yourself and just right. please love yourself and just let me be. I've been through a lot, I just wanna do me. If that's not cool, I'ma take my leave. One way trip out to California. I don't need no Patagonia. And I meet all my expectations. And you find someone to do it for you. It's cool. That could be a move. I ain't even trying to be rude. But right now, I ain't got the tools. And if you find a new dude, that is gonna be enough for you. And no cap, I just wanna know you happy. And don't snap, you ain't gotta throw shit at me. But I got things that I'm trying to work through. And you need someone to love you madly, I know. Would you be able to break down some of the lyrics from that? Oh, sure. Yeah, um, I say, please. Love yourself and just let me be. I've been through a lot, I just wanna do me. If that's not cool, then I'ma take my leave. Those lyrics are just basically just, that's just basically saying, man, like, I've been through so much that I don't have the energy to give you what you need, you know? Uh, emotionally, like, I'm just trying so hard just to stay alive and just to be okay. I, I can't take care of you right now. So it's just like, whatever you have to do for you, Right now, it's like, I accept it, it's okay, you know? If it affects me in a negative way, that's fine because it's what you need to do for you in your life. That song, it was just like um, an acceptance of the reality of life. It's just like, man, like, that's just any relationship. It's like living unselfishly, you know? I think that song is about really just being unselfish in a relationship and loving somebody for exactly who they are, whether they benefit your life or not, you know? It's like just loving somebody, period. When they have nothing, when they have nothing to offer you, and uh, no matter what they do, it's like unconditional love. And I feel like a lot of a lot of the love that we know is conditional. When I wrote that song, I think I was just um, I was just starting to understand what it means to love somebody unconditionally, you know. And and that's why I, that's why that song is like my favorite. Appreciate you breaking that down. Is it based around one particular person? Um, no. It's just based on just life, you know? Yeah, it's just how I felt at the time about anybody. It's like, at the time I just felt like, man, I have nothing to give to anybody. So I need everybody to just relax and let me live for a while and everybody can do them and that's fine. And it doesn't matter if what you do, I don't, I don't care what you do. You can do things that don't serve me, it's fine because I'm just so focused on just trying to be okay, you know? That, uh, you, that that's, that's the, the acceptance, you know? I feel like you, I grew, you know, I, I upped the level because I feel like a lot of times we as people, we want people to be what we want them to be. It's like, yo, I want you to be this. Like, why can't you be what I, the, the vision that I have in my head, you know? And I feel like once you give that up because you're so focused on who you want to be for yourself, it, you kind of, your relationships deepen because every, all the love you have for people is real and it's not based off of who they are and who they are for you and what, can, what they can bring to your life, you know? It's like, because I started bring, giving that to myself, you know, so. So when you write a song like that and you put it out to the world, do you feel like it helps you move on and, and let go of some of those emotions? Is that how it works for you? Yeah, it's like, when, you, when I write a song like that, it helps me put my thoughts and my emotions on paper. So I kind of understand myself better after writing those songs like I've never been I've never been that great at articulating to somebody how I feel face to face but through song I can understand myself and then it's easier to explain it to somebody else it's just this weird thing it's like you know I'm, I'm still learning a lot about myself just uh, through writing and through art and I'm learning how to kind of take what I do in my art and put it into into action in my real life and so yeah I can appreciate that. I'm similar with video. I, I find it hard sometimes to communicate, but it's like, look, I'll make a video and then I'll, I'll show you. You can figure out what I'm trying to say that That's way. That's dope. <laughs> so what's the, what's the biggest lesson that you've learned being an independent artist? The biggest lesson I learned is that you have to make it work no matter what. There's always a way, you know? There's, there's always a way. When there's a will, there's a way. So you can do things that people haven't done yet. You know, you just have to actually like go out on a limb and try. And, um, and the impossible can be achieved, you know? Like, I feel like a lot of times, like, I, when I started making music, I thought the only way I could make it is if I had a record label, you know? And then 
I found out, oh, there's money in independent artistry. Oh, I can make money on Tucor. Oh, I actually have money in my account. This is crazy. I didn't know that I could do that. So it's like you kind of just have to keep on, you know, but believing in yourself and having and having hope and, and having faith. And you just have to stay creative, you know? You have to the only I think the only way you can be a, an independent artist is if you really love what you do, you know? Because it takes passion to be independent. Like, you know, it, it takes a lot of energy. I remember days I used to dread when the sun rose. Alcohol benders speeding through the city off Bacardi on a bridge from a party in mid-December. 40 past the cop car, fuck it, I don't remember. Knowing if they wanted to stop us, then they could end us. A high speed chase down to the till we end up eating checks in the book and with people we thought was dead, fuck. Lost boy made a poor choice, how to slip through, lead a pack with a small voice, bolt so in the flesh, I show him the way. And even when they hate me, shit, I love them the same. I do it for Lil Code, I got the world up on my shoulders, and I do it for the love of the game. What the fuck is up, y'all? How y'all doing? Is that how you feel when you wake up in the morning? You're excited and energized to get out and create music? You still have the passion yourself? Yeah, I definitely have the passion to make music. I think, but I had to regain that, you know? It's like, I feel like I lost it. I lost it along the way at some point. And um, I found it again when I just stopped having expectations for myself and for my music. And so now when I get, when I get down to making music and I get at the keyboard, I'm just, I'm gonna, I always have this uh, idea, I always have this attitude where I'm just gonna have fun. If I don't make something that is like a hit record, that's fine. But I'm gonna have fun when I sit at my keyboard, you know? And I'm gonna enjoy it, and I'm gonna enjoy the writing process. And for however many hours I'm writing that day, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have fun with it. And I, and I feel like I come up with better music just enjoying it and having fun with it. So um, that's how I keep it. I, that's how I keep the, um, the passion going. It's just no expectations, make whatever. If I want to make a rock song that day, make a rock song. If, I, if I'm feeling like the Beatles, then I'm gonna make something like, like that vibe. Well, maybe I'm feeling like Bob Dylan-esque today. Like, or maybe, you know what, I'm really in my rapping bag today. I'm gonna, you know, channel that Jay-Z and channel Biggie Smalls, you know? So it's just, every time I sit down, I just feel like, I think the first question I ask myself is, how do I feel right now? And what do I want to do? And what do I want to lay down? And that keeps it fresh, you know? And if you love something, you should do it every day, period. Like, if you love your kids, you should hang out with them every day. If you love your wife, you should hang out with her every day. You should give her energy. And for me, it's music. Music is something I love, so I'm gonna do it every day, even if it's for an hour, two hours, or whatever. It's like, and that's how you keep the passion going. So what would you say is the most important song that Coda the Friend has made? For my fans, it's um, Colorado. You know, I think for my fans, Colorado is the most important song because it really has that attitude of like, no matter what's going on in my life, I'm gonna push through and I'm gonna go get my goals, you know? That's really the attitude that I had when I was like going through really hard times in my life. It's just like, yo, bro, I don't even hear that. I don't even see that. I got goals to reach and everything. I think my, the most important song I've made was Empty Cup because it's about loving yourself. And loving yourself is underrated because it's like, when you love yourself, you learn to love other people, you know? You can only love other people as much as you love yourself. Final question, what's your biggest dream? My biggest dream, I'm living my biggest dream right now. I get to make music for a living. Uh, I've traveled the world, you know, I have a family. <laughs> I have every day, I have like, I have my dream house and it's not anything extravagant, but it's just like, it's, it's a dream to me, you know? So I don't really have any more dreams left, man. I think you just gotta know when you're blessed. And uh, that's like, that's a key to life. It's just knowing when you have everything. And I feel like I have everything. And so I'm, I'm just paying attention to, um, I'm just making sure I stay grateful. Well, hey, it's amazing that you can say that. So congratulations. Thank you, man. Thank you. And appreciate your time today. So enjoy the rest of the tour. Thank you, bro. <laughs>